off blast. Did the dog fart? No. Nah. Yes, the dog <laughs> off blasted. You did startle the cat with that off blast. <laughs> Good. My off blasts are still effective. <laughs> All right, greetings, fellow followers. This is your boy, uh, Fearless Billy and Wanda, lounging over here with our uh, special doge. And, uh, of course, next to Special Doge is our Demon Lord Han. Say hello. Next to him is our uh, <laughs> Master of Gaming, Rum. What's up? And, of course, like, rounding everything out is the Delivery Man at Dawn. Hey. So, yeah, let's just jump straight into it. Uh, let's talk some tech stuffs. Uh, Dawn, you got uh, a few stories you wanted to share with us? Well, um, I found this interesting story about... How in the University of Minnesota, uh, Masonic Hospital used virtual reality to successfully separate two conjoined twins um, that were joined at the heart. Hmm. Um, Ooh. Yeah. So they used 3D models to successfully separate them. Hmm. And that's, that's amazing. Pretty, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, like, dealing with conjoined twins is always a big problem to begin with. A lot of times in the past, they would just leave the twins kind of fused together mm -hmm. for the most part. So, so, so you use, like, micro cameras to use, and use the VR to help separate them? Or? Uh, they used the VR to create uh, virtual models. So they played around with the models. Oh, you're talking about... Uh, so they did. They, did they use uh, 3D printing as well, or was it just the in in the VR world? Just in the VR world. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But still, though, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, like back then, you know, initially you didn't have doctors. Like doctors didn't have those kinds of scenarios virtually available to them. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it kind of speaks to like the advancement of uh, tech that we're able to get that far, especially with virtual reality tech. Yeah, that's right. You know. They, I could see them using that for training purposes as well. Yeah. I'm sure they already do. Yeah. They're yeah, yeah they're already doing that for um I know that the the government like for uh, soldiers and stuff they they use uh, VR uh, most uh, I've heard stories about uh for people that have post traumatic stress post traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. they use that to help them uh, cope with with this scenarios that they were in right exactly because they can play around with it mm -hmm. without yeah. without physically being there yep. that and uh with the instance you brought up with it being you know a very delicate and almost theoretical procedure mm -hmm. that's right no one's life is on the line that's right they can you know see if it's even doable mm -hmm. before they put them under the knife yep and that way they don't have to unnecessarily risk someone. That, and if you think about it as the doctor who has to go in there... Yeah, that's right. That would probably qualify as post-traumatic stress as mm -hmm. well if that uh, operation goes south. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, at the same token, though, that is a pretty amazing advancement. It kind of reminds me about how now they're able to 3D print organs mm -hmm. at this point. Nice. Um, yeah, there's been technologies like doing an uh, organic 3D printing that have come up as like, maybe someday we will get that replicator. <laughs> I'm more concerned about, you know, going into the gene code and uh, getting rid of my need for glasses. You know, <laughs> the whole Gattaca thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I want to be more statuesque, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, that's actually what I'm waiting for. Because I'm, I'm waiting for either the 3D virtual reality thing where they can actually um, find an operation that could work mm -hmm. on, on my eyes or get a complete new set of eyes. And, yeah. You know. you know. Or just go for that... Uh... <laughs> Round yeah, of applause. He's not, he's not going to get down. The cat is climbing on top of the <laughs> refrigerator right now. Because he's like absolutely determined to perch up on top. <laughs> or now for a lot of you guys who have had cats, you know how this works. You and know. yeah, that's Yeah, good. yeah. So anywho, um, so yeah, like the, we had, you know, of course, VR printing. 
Uh, what were some other really good stuff that came out this week, Adon? I think, let's see, the other thing that I thought was pretty interesting was that Lyft is now going to be working as a developer for self-driving software, not so much the, dri- the car itself, like Google or Uber. So what Lyft is doing now is working with other companies to develop the software and then sell the software. That's what I understood. Hmm. Kind of makes sense because, like, the the thing with companies like Uber and Lyft, like, they actually, I think Uber themselves have taken a pretty big hit as of late. Mm-hmm. They're didn't, dealing with a lot of issues with the CEO. Yeah, the CEO had to, or got fired, didn't he? Or, did, or he quit? He um, stepped down. He yeah. stepped down, like, after a whole bunch of, a lot of his top staff all resigned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, just crazy, crazy stuff, so... Now, if only Trump would resign. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Not likely. (laughs) But, yeah, like, but it's a really interesting game that they're playing because, you know, as much as, like, the self-drive, the whole, like, Uber and Lyft revolution was nice when it happened, at the same token, it's really hard to fight those unions that are part of, like, cabs Mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Right. You know, because one of the things about you know Uber and Lyft is that they're not unionized, uh, which has actually been one of the main issues that they've been fighting about in Uber land. Right. So, you know, for Lyft actually kind of sidestepping that to where you know because eventually it's going to happen. Like self-driving cars are going to kind of take over. Yep. Yeah. And you know, which will probably happen when we're all you know. Too old to you, drive anyway. Too old to drive anyway. We're too busy trying to tell people to get off our lawn. Yeah, <laughs> we're currently telling people to get off our lawn. Yeah. This is true. We don't have one. Yep. <laughs> get off we're my t- theoretical lawn. Well, get <laughs> off my patio. My, get <laughs> off my philosophical lawn. <laughs> get but, off my virtual lawn. <laughs> yeah, but it is an interesting deal. That's in that... a couple years. We're gonna make. We're gonna make a game for the VR headset. <laughs> Virtual lawn. Virtual lawn. Virtual lawn. And you can be an old guy telling kids to get off of it. Oh, no, that's your only playable character. A geriatric, angry person who just wants people to go the fuck away. Yep. You've got your mailmen. You've got your teenagers. You've got uh, you're happy the, couples. You're the dude from Up. Yes. Yeah. Except you don't have secretly a uh, tear-jerkingly great story to tell. You're just a jerk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Might so Grand Theft Auto, it, <laughs> like, or just call it Grand Toronto. Yes, <laughs> Grand Torino. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, mean, I was making like you can't actually use Grand Torino unless you're My Hero Academia. So <laughs> you call it Grand Toronto that way. You can like Grand Toronto VR. All the fox leather on your face you could ever want. Get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, digressing back to the original point. Because there's an empty chair next to him. There is an empty chair, and <laughs> your character is also just happens to be one of the good, the bad, or the ugly. You decide. That's your <laughs> character creation options. <laughs> but no matter what, you will be unforgiven. And I'm done, so please continue. And you're a man with no name. But, yeah, as I was saying, like, <laughs> it is interesting that Lyft is kind of sidestepping all of that to where even when the need for physical drivers fades away they'll still have a means of making money. Mm Mm-hmm. You know? That's right. Uh, Of course, like, the next big thing is, like, it's not as much Ubering or lifting anymore. It's actually food delivery through, like, Uber Eats and DoorDash, E24, and all that nice little jazz. I don't know what Lyft uses, like, as their delivery name yet. They'll probably have something up soon. Yeah, that's right. I don't think they have one yet. There's something out there called, uh, uh, was it Favor? Yeah, okay. Favor is another really big one. Yeah. Because a lot of these businesses, they have no... They, what they do is they go up to a lot of restaurants that normally don't do delivery mm-hmm. or only do pickup style services. Right. They all actually deliver that food to customers. Strangely enough, someone from Favor came up to our work <laughs> to pick up pizzas to deliver to somebody else. Even though we deliver pizzas. <laughs> Maybe they were trying to game the system and no, get they, a carry out only. They they ordered like they're paying more for the favor stuff than our delivery fees would cost. Yeah, because like a lot with a lot of those businesses, they do run a little bit more expensive on a delivery fee. Like a typical like pizza delivery fee is maybe two to two fifty. 
Whereas uh, Favor and companies like that usually charge a minimum of uh, six bucks. Mm -hmm. But what I think it is is that the uh, tip is baked into that fee. Yeah. It's separate. It's supposed to be separate. But I mean, like, well, in other words, what happens is that, like, they know the driver for favor. Like, they don't have to worry about tipping them out as much. If that makes sense. Yeah, right. It's more of, like, gaming the system so they don't have to tip. Yeah. Even though they're kind of paying more overall. But, mm -hmm. you know, it happens. But, yeah, like I said, you know, interesting uh, deal that Lyft's doing. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool stuff. Um... So please uh, discuss the uh, peer-reviewed midichlorians paper. Oh dear God! So <laughs> do, do what now? This this was just a, a an article that that I found that it was pretty funny. So this guy decided to write a paper. Uh, supposedly this um, scientifically based paper on Star Wars on the what you just said. Midichlorians. Uh, for those blessfully. Uh, blissfully not familiar with midichlorians are they're an idiotic plot device introduced in the prequel trilogy to show that anakin skywalker is objectively more powerful than any other jedi out there Which... that is their sole reason for existence they're stupid yeah. it's kind of like power levels in dragon ball z yeah. <laughs> except midichlorian well midichlorians have spawned a Even... fair amount of memes but none are as famous as it's over 9,000. Even Dragon Ball dropped the whole power levels thing. Yeah, and if you notice, were midichlorians mentioned in episode uh, 7? No. Exactly. Because by the time 4 like, took place, there was no such thing as midichlorians because all the Jedi were dead. Anywho, though. <laughs> yes, back to... Well, no, let's, let's let's jump back into it. So, dude writes a paper about midi chlorians and and the science behind it, science. And so, the what he was doing is um, to see what would happen if uh, any journals would pick it up, and they did. That <laughs> five journals picked it up, and they went along with it, and they said, "Yeah, we're gonna publish it. Um, just fork up uh, some cash." What? Yeah. Like, they want him to pay them to publish it. Yeah. Well, I mean, no. that's kind of part of how it works in the uh, peer review community. I mean, yeah. That's how they make their money at the end of the day. Well, how? who would you consider a peer for science fiction science? <laughs> yeah. I know, right? So. I mean, do, do they have degrees for this now? I, I probably should have gone for that instead of programming or English lit or whatever I have, like, a sophomore's amount of credits towards. <laughs> so yeah. I thought that I mean, as as a joke, that was that was pretty funny. I thought that was yeah, you know. it was, and we like to keep it light here on the Nebula. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it, do, it does kind of open up an interesting like can of worms though, because one of the constant debates that goes on in like science and tech and everything else is the how valid are peer-reviewed articles right. because generally like peer-reviewed articles are supposed to be held to a really high standard because they're peer-reviewed by peeps that are very you know have high academic credentials mm -hmm. so the very fact that you have a bunch of people with these level of qualifications throwing themselves in and endorsing a paper that was based <laughs> off of star wars <laughs> Which, don't get me wrong, I love Star Wars as a series, but I just, like, I, I kind of really want to get my hand on this article, because I want to see exactly what was so compelling about it that they went ahead and peer-reviewed it and published it. Because otherwise, that could open the door up for some really nasty stuff to be accepted. A lot of pseudoscience could be accepted as fact, you know, because of it. Yeah, I can actually... Was um, it actually published, though? It was published. Okay. It, it was, was published. published. Yeah, he made it sound like the dude had to pay to get it published. Well, both things happened, because the five journals that accepted it, uh, three of them asked for money, two of them published it. Hmm. So, I'm going to find the link, and I'll, you know, we can post it. We should yeah. probably post it in the... Uh, Description. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely, because I think that would be... A really interesting hotbed 
to kind of have a discussion about like about this. <laughs> should uh should post a link for the uh, VR thing too. Yeah. 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 We'll we'll put up in uh, the description links. below. Yeah. Put all the links in the description <laughs> below. But yeah. So I mean, yeah, man, this that's gonna throw me off the entire rest of the recording. Just like you know, just sitting here, just like somebody really got a fucking Star Wars <laughs> deal approved, peer reviewed. <laughs> oh, well, man. you can be ordained as a, I think, a <laughs> Jedi, either master or yep. you can marry people as a Jedi. Yep, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, uh, recognized religion now by the government. It has to be enough people. I forgot what year the census was, but enough people said, "Oh yeah, I'm a Jedi Knight." Mm-hmm. And it had to be included in the list of religions. And now in in the military, when you're uh, putting your religion for your uh, dog tags, you can put it in as Jedi. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Since it's a recognized religion now. <laughs> How oh, far have we fallen? Because it, 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 it all depends on the census. If enough people put that they are a certain religion in the census, the government has to recognize it as a religion. Well, the thing is, it's not without precedent, because you have Scientology, which was also written by a science fiction writer. Yeah. Yep. And it has a bunch of silly ideas. Yep. And Pastafarians. Hmm? Pastafarians, yeah. Because they, they, they're, they're pretty much atheists, just making fun of religion. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah. No, this exactly. is like, I, I know what's going to happen. Like, not this census, but the upcoming one. You know what's going to happen? You go to the list of religions, and, like, on one of the check boxes, it's going to read, Dicks out for Harambe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I still want to create a uh, video game based religion Jeez. where the first book is Pong. So it's like uh, the first book of Pong, and then it's like, beep, boop, <laughs> beep, boop, beep, boop. <laughs> oh, Please man. go to Pong Chapter 3. In and the, the beginning, beeps. there and was the a boops. beep and then a boop. <laughs> However, when Wright did not return the beep, right. there was a point. <laughs> and this point was good. <laughs> However, See, he gets it. too many points. <laughs> and um, the joke's done. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know. And then like, like, later on, there'd be like the book of Mario and the book of Sonic and <laughs> now these like, two divided the world. It's kind of like you know you get to, you get back from Sunday service and you know you go up to your kids it's like, look there guys, y'all better be careful out here. I'm gonna have to go use the bathroom. I'm gonna be in there for a while. I'll come back after you after the book of Super Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> when, they, when, they, when they get to the book of uh, uh, N64, let me know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and don't you geez. little bastards put in any cheat codes. <laughs> yeah, the Konami code. <laughs> the blood code. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy. Speaking of gaming stuff, so uh, we'll kind of segue a little bit over into this. Yeah. Um, so, uh, for the course of the day of this recording, it was the Pokemon Go Fest over in Chicago. Um, the whole point was that it's been a year of Pokemon Go. Of course, it's a giant kind of social media phone mobile phenomenon that first took around last year. So they wanted to celebrate it by unveiling legendaries for the first time. And their main event was going to be in Chicago, which are invited. It was open. Everybody can come in. The whole point is everybody get together, do goals, catch Pokemon, and, you know, at the end of it, if they did enough, they'd get legendaries to appear and try to catch those. And... Everybody, of course, outside of Chicago would also be helping towards this goal. Well, things didn't quite go as well as they planned. Uh, to begin with, the uh, cell phone signal inside that park, Grant Park, was shot. Um, whenever uh, they came out to make announcements, they were getting booed like crazy. They couldn't even do any of the goals that Niantic had set for the event. Because, of course, nobody could catch any Pokemon. The servers were crashed, everything else. <laughs> so, it ended up culminating with, instead, Niantic, for everybody that attended the event, they got, like, $100 worth of Poke, uh, Poke coins. <laughs> they got, like, all sorts of, like, balls and stuff, and they were all given free Lugias. 
which, as you guys know, is like one of the big legendary Pokemon. Basically, when you combine... Neither did I. (laughs) Yeah, like, for, for those who are, like, not great in Pokemon lore, when you combine the three main legendary birds, Moltres, Zapdos, and, uh... Artukano, you get Lugia. So, kind of the super all-powerful bird. Like, right. it was featured in Pokemon the movie 2000. The ultimate What about bird. Shu? I hear he's <laughs> strong against uh, spider types. I-, I heard that a lot, too. You know? Bug types. Bug types. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it was just kind of like... It kind of also speaks to, like... Pokemon Go was a really po- is a really popular app. But, like, from day one, it's been kind of riddled with problems, and I think this was kind of the culmination of that. Yeah. Well, it had its bloom when it first came out, Mm -hmm. and then it just kind of died off, and you never heard anything about it. Yeah. Everybody was freaking out over it when it first came out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then it, you know, the fervor died away, and maybe this uh, year anniversary was them trying to regain that initial steam they had but it's kind of unfortunate that it just kind of blew up in their faces yeah. well like they said there and it blew up pretty good at first and then there were sustaining stuff throughout the summer but then in the fall time they made some really wonky balance changes in which they turned around and made like even low level pokemon almost impossible to catch Basically, to try to drive people to spend money on Pokeballs. Right. Like, they were trying to, like, kind of increase the whaling portion of the mobile game. Mm-hmm. And when that happened, that kind of turned a lot of people away. Yeah. And, of course, they went back and kind of rebalanced it a little bit later, but... By then, it was already too late. It was it kind of, sort of. I mean, it's got a pretty steady crowd. They make a pretty good amount, amount of money per month, but... That summer of Pokemon Go can't really be duplicated. Nope. Of course, for Nintendo, it worked all perfectly because because of how big Pokemon Go was, it got a lot of lapsed fans into Pokemon again, which then led into Sun and Moon becoming the biggest entries in the series. <laughs> so, on a tangentially related topic, didn't a while ago you mention some kind of Harry Potter-esque or Harry Potter-themed Pokemon Go-esque game? Yeah, a while back they were talking about it, but I never heard anything else about it. So, ah, so it's either in development hell, never materialized, or J.K. Rowling said no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of which I would applaud her for. I would, I would say yeah. Yeah. I, I think you said at at that time that you're still waiting for the Dark Souls version of that. <laughs> Dark Souls Go, where your <laughs> phone just hits you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, show me that. No, it's Ow? like what you do. Ah! Every every time you 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 walk down somewhere, you see a giant monster, and you have to run away from it. Oh yeah, because <laughs> you can't fight it. <laughs> it's no, you can game. fight it. It will just kill you. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's just like the ultimate AR game. You see a monster, you immediately just start running. Like no. <laughs> hey, it'd be really good for people who uh, wanted to go jogging. Yeah, true that. You know, the ultimate exercise uh, routine. It's like, huh. Night Artorias. Fuck, nope. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, like, uh, so going for Pokemon, um, actually, Adon's got a really good bit here. So, for a lot of you guys know, mm-hmm. who don't know, Adon is a little bit on the visually impaired side. So, mm-hmm. he doesn't touch into a whole ton of games that often. But you have the opportunity to play what's considered to be, like, a pretty good current gen game. It's actually getting a sequel this fall. And that was Shadow of Mordor. Yeah. How was that experience? So it was fun. Um, I'm I have simple tastes um, in games overall. So first person shooters are pretty cool. Like um, I really enjoyed Gears of War and the series because you just shoot and kill yeah. aliens. That's first it. one was really good. Well, yeah. you do slam monster energy drinks when you're not chainsawing aliens. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And that's all I'm asking for. That's all I want. Slamming monster energy drinks? Yep. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to go on a monster energy drink run after this. Why am I plugging that fuck? <laughs> oh, yeah, because I work overnight. And we practically live on the shit. <laughs> you do. You can. So <laughs> You can. I'd rather not. <laughs> So that's what I that's what you do in Shadow of Mordor. Uh, you just kill ogres. Yep. 
um, and that's that's what I did, and it's pretty enjoyable. Well, you might uh, be thrilled to find that the Assassin's Creed series that uh, Jason is so high on is essentially a non Lord of the Rings version of uh, Shadow of Mordor. Actually, Lord, Lord of the, the uh, Shadow of Mordor was created by one of the guys who helped create okay. uh, uh, Assassin's Creed Two. That makes a lot of sense. So yeah, you probably like the Assassin's Creed games mm -hmm. quite a bit. Although it doesn't have the uh, nemesis system, so you can't watch douche gut ripper <laughs> go from uh, spear carrying grunt to Lord of the Horde just to boot his ass off a cliff. But in Brotherhood, you can recruit uh, assassins to your uh, cause and gain them as levels. Frederick the douche. Yep. But can you boot him off a cliff when you're tired of him? No, you can send him on a ship and have him die on the ship. <laughs> and now we know Jason's playstyle. <laughs> yes. If he so. invites you to go boating, watch the fuck out. <laughs> Something that I also enjoyed about the game is that when you get killed, the ogre that kills you uh, goes up in um, levels. Yeah. That's how you get Douche Gut Ripper to command the entire orc horde. So, yeah, and that's what happened. So... You know, the friend that I was playing... I was playing a friend's game. So I think <laughs> my friend's game is going to have to start all over again. <laughs> That's funny. Because <laughs> I got killed a lot. So. Man, uh, I played this game and it was handable. Now they're all super fucking powerful. <laughs> yeah. It's like somebody so. playing somebody else's Skyrim account and they go into, the, uh, go into the town and everybody's dead except for the guards. And they attack you as soon as you walk in. <laughs> what much. happened here? <laughs> you much. happened here. Yeah, yeah. What? Uh, that and like you find out that all of your Daedric armor and everything was just thrown off of a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're just running around naked. So, why is it, why is everything hitting me once and I'm dying? Oh yeah. shit. <laughs> Something that helped me a lot, um, being visually impaired, is that um, you can do this thing, I don't know what they call it in the game, where you um, make yourself glow and make the ogres glow. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's like when uh, Frodo, Frodo puts the wing, ring on and yeah. goes into the uh, uh, other realm, whatever. Okay, and so that helps me, fi that helped me found, find the ogres. Yeah. A lot of the times, and and get my my bearings in the game, and and uh, not get so really lost. It's a really dark, yeah, colored game. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The, the the brown is strong with Shadow of Mordor, yeah. but real is brown. <laughs> you, yeah, you there's have... only there's only so like but does it sepia taste... and brown tone you can get. But does it taste game? like purple? <laughs> <laughs> real tastes like purple. Yeah, real tastes like purple. And, um, How high the, was this person when they came to this realization? The, so, Don, the AI is also pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard a lot of good things about the AI. It the, was an enjoyable game. The sequel is supposed to be coming out this fall, and uh, it's supposed to have same uh, similar uh, concept where you can recruit people or recruit orcs and stuff to huh. add to your army. Something else that was really fun uh, is that there's you know that that um is related to the ai uh is that you can guide ogres um in into dogs like the uh gremlin dogs or whatever they're called yeah. like the huge dogs that the wargs yeah yeah remember can't you also even guide them into fighting each other mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah because uh isn't there a mechanic where you can like possess them using the uh spirit with you and that basically just makes them do dumb shit. Mm -hmm. And all of that just makes it fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was... Ac uh, ideas like that have been floating around. I think it's just that the technology is finally able to cope with it. Right. Like, uh, back in the Dreamcast days, there was a plan... Have any of you played Chaka and the Forever Man? No. Nope. No. Nope. It's a platformer based on a comic uh, about a swordsman who challenged death to a duel. And... Mm -hmm. Immortality was the prize. And they never say whether he won or not, but he is undying. However, he's in service to death. 
So it leaves it very vague whether he won or not because, yeah, he got the immortality he sought, but he's essentially a permanently indentured servant. Mm -hmm. But the idea was they were going to have a Dreamcast game where, you know, how they give you options on how to complete things in Shadows of Mortar. You could just give it an arrow between the eyes or you could convince uh, Blood Fiend Mick intestine eater mm -hmm. to go kill douche gut ripper no, that's right. i'm going to keep going back to douche gut ripper um or you could do any number of things you could you know throw a picture of a naked oh wait that's metal gear <laughs> yeah. uh, you had options of how to do it and in this check end game that they were talking about but it never materialized they had stuff like that like say you were you were told by death to go take out this one person who absolutely loves this one trinket. And they were talking about it, and yeah, you could straight up, since you are a swordsman who at least matched death in single combat, you could go, hey, let's rock, buddy. Or you could take that thing he loves, dangle it over a cliff like a dick, mm -hmm. and then watch him as he goes full lemming right after him. Yeah. And I'm really glad that the technology has finally caught up to these things that people have been imagining for years. Mm -hmm. Another yeah. big thing, time to plug Navy Devil of the Fighting in this return, uh, characters in Street Fighter V, they actually have different win quotes based on who they fight. Mm -hmm. Also, another big thing of the uh, pre-fight taunts that they have in Mortal Kombat X. Like, say, if mm -hmm. Jason Voorhees is fighting <laughs> Cassie Cage, who's a little bit of a blonde bimbo, so she is kind of Jason Voorhees' bread and butter to chop to pieces. Mm -hmm. So she's like, oh no, I'm so totally scared. No, I'm gonna fuck you up. Mm -hmm. Or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I I'm not quoting verbatim. But, anyway, neat. Yeah, Moving I mean, on. like, yeah, I mean, choices in games are, you know, getting better and better. Of course, I remember when it kind of started with the Fable series. Mm -hmm. As incredibly to flawed as as incredibly flawed as that is, you know, it really kind of helped advance that whole concept. Yeah, Dishonored had had a pretty good uh, <clears throat> alternate paths to do things as well. Hmm. Yeah. And I would say that Fable 2 really reached its pinnacle in the second iteration. Well, that's just me. But, uh, it has to start somewhere. Yeah. Indeed it does. And it started with Pong. <laughs> <laughs> with See? the beeps it, it's and a... the boops. <laughs> and it was good. It would be anyway. a great religion, would it not? Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it would not. <laughs> anyway, uh, this past week, Evo 2017 happened. Yep. Which, if you're not familiar, is a huge fighting game competition. And a lot of neat announcements came out of that. Um, plenty of DLC characters, uh, which one of was a new Street Fighter V DLC character named Abigail, who... I found out recently is a reskin of Hugo and a boss in the Final Fight series. It looks kind of neat. You'd expect him, since he's a hulking huge guy, to be a grappler, but he really didn't do many throws. So we still need to wait and see what comes out of that to see what kind of character he is. We also will have to wait and see to see what the other two Season 2 characters are. Because we've got uh, Akuma, Colin... Ed, who completely struck me out of surprise, I did not know about him until I signed into Street Fighter V the other night. Uh, he's apparently a mix somewhere between Balrog and an annoying kid. Hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. But now we've got Abigail, Mr. Tires are high fashion. Look at my guns. <laughs> and kind of curious who the other two will be. Uh, they've also got, in the realm of DLC... Tekken 7 is getting another uh, guest character in the form of Geese Howard from the King of Fighters series, which is really mm. interesting because Tekken 7, I'm not sure how many more guest characters they're going to do, but both are villains, which is an interesting uh, design choice because, say, if a villain is a really big hit, you can keep them around, yeah, but if they're not, you can just go, okay, fuck them, go away. Yeah, it's kind of even more interesting because, like, in Geese, they kind of picked, like, a weeaboo. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I mean, but that seems to be a theme in games now. They're yeah. picking weeaboos, like, uh, in the Samurai Quest line. Slight spoilers for uh, Final Fantasy XIV Samurai Quest line. 
your main well no actually he just kind of shows up he's the villain of the week but he is a giant weeaboo it's like ooh, look at my katana collection look at my geisha dancers look at my cowboy hat wearing samurai <laughs> yeah he uses gladiator weapon skills but they are making that point that he's totally not a samurai your true samurai ass is gonna fuck him up even though you're a blonde haired blue eyed woman <laughs> So much Your mileage may vary. <laughs> so much Desu. Yep. Um, but yeah, going back to the thing about uh, Tekken 7 having villains as guest characters, it is neat because you are able to get rid of them. Say if a hero hits like Link in Soul Calibur 2, you come back in a subsequent game and you're like, hey, where's that hero? He's doing good. We liked him. Why get rid of him? And Cap, front and center, <laughs> the true star of this show. Interesting thoughts. Um, also, a new uh, game was announced. Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, which details are scant at this moment because it has been just announced a week ago, but it does seek to ram together characters from Blaze Blue, made by the house that Guilty Gear built, Arc System Works, which I actually thought that uh, Daisuke Ishiwatari, the, guy, the creative force and, you know, guy who runs the music department for uh, Arc System Works, it seems, was also the driving force behind Blaze Blue, but apparently not. Uh, a guy by the name of Toshimichi Mori handles that, so that was a bit of a uh, the more you know moment for me. It was kind of <laughs> nice. And uh, so yeah, it has the Blaze Blue characters. It has uh, the Delgin Fighter Undernight in Birth, which for those of you that don't know, it's a well, as mentioned, Dojin Fighter, which uh, are mostly about spectacle, and it's a small group of people who come together, they make a fighting game more difficult to make than a uh, visual novel, which is what most Dojin circles do that make video games, but it has an interesting system, it kind of runs along the lines of um, a little bit of Arcana Hearts, very similar. But uh, it also throws in another Arc System Works game, which borrows from uh, Atlas's Persona series, uh, Persona 4 Arena, which I had the question of, will they keep auto combos? Because Persona 4 Arena had the auto combos. You could just mass square, and you would get good damage out of it. Punishable as fuck by someone who knew what they were doing, but you could still get good damage out of it at a low level and feel like you're doing something which might push you to actually get to a higher level. You look like you want to say something. No. Okay. But I think, like, the most interesting part of that unveil, though, was the very end. Yes, with the uh, Ruby Rose being in it. Huh. Which, the, yeah. I find that very <laughs> interesting that not only did they get the licensing to get across, but it's just kind of neat uh apparently rooster teeth themselves joked about a uh, ruby fighting game which not exactly in a little misleading but good on them for teasing the public Who, yeah who's, exactly. who's ruby rose the main character from ruby uh, uh it's yeah. red riding hood never, reimagined never seen it no. ruby uh for those of you guys who don't know is the series that developed was developed by on money on before his death mm -hmm. and um because, like, he had been with Rooster Teeth for a few years, helping them out with Red vs. Blue. So they gave him the shot to make his own show, and he created Ruby as a response. Mm -hmm. um, actually, really successful. It's even got its own uh, Japanese dub, hmm. which you can find on Crunchyroll. Yep, yeah, it's on Crunchyroll. Ruby Chib Chibi, is it? Or is no, that no, it's an actual... Chibi, but the actual series. series. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They just yeah. which... redubbed it in Japanese. I will personally apologize to the American voice actors for Ruby, but holy fuck, her voice is annoying in English. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But she's a little girl, so I think they wanted to go with that. You know, Probably. Annoying yeah. little girl. Uh, Comic-Con's going on right now, too. Oh, this? Yep. That's why all the trailers have been dropping today. That makes sense. And, um... In further Evo fighting news, uh, Jubei was announced for Blaze Blue. Speaking of Blaze Blue, uh, probably another DLC character. 
He's really neat. He seems to play a little bit like Takaka, maxed, mashed with a bit of gin, for those familiar with the series. Mm. For those not, get good scrubs. Yeah. He's kind of like, I have a, I have a, I have a Jude here on my tummy. You do. Yes, I do. He is my precious Jude. Yes, he Who's is. Who's completely ignoring me. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, let's see if I give you treats in the future. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, just to kind of segue over a little bit, you know, Comic-Con is happening right now this weekend. Like, all the hot, all the, the hot stuffs, the hot trailers are coming out, you know, um... Uh, probably like already my favorite so far would be the Thor Ragnarok trailer. That was really good. So yeah, and that and the uh, Ready Player One trailer was pretty good. Yeah. Aside I, from I that was interesting. Aside yeah. from his misguided fixation on a very crappy decade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of cool, cool stuff came out of the eighties. Yeah, uh, but we came out of the eighties. It was a horrible decade. A lot of cool stuff came out of the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> And some not cool things did, like New Wave. I don't know. Yeah. Like the the movies were so cheesy. The songs, the lyrics. Back you know. to the Future. Back to the Future was also kind of cheesy. One of the greatest yeah. fucking movies ever. Karate Kid, you know. Yeah. You Red can Land. have cheese. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, yeah. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, like, I mean, plus without the '80s, we wouldn't have been given the gift of Stan Bush, the man behind such iconic theme songs. You know, it was like. Fight to survive. Yes. Iron Eagle. The touch. <laughs> the Eye of the Tiger. And... You got the well, touch. Well, Eye of the Tiger was Survivor. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But still, you know, like he did the Karate Kid theme too, didn't he? Um, I think he did the first one. You're the best around. Yeah. Uh, the second one was done by. Uh, that was supposed to be a uh, a song for uh, Rocky. Yeah. But yeah, they. Uh, <laughs> They didn't want it. They went with Eye of the Tiger instead. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, the funny, but yeah, and of course, like, the second Karate Kid theme song was Glory of Love by Peter Cetera, formerly of Chicago at that point. <laughs> yeah, I know my 80s. <laughs> Here's <laughs> Billy Nuanda, our 80s encyclopedia. So you know. in, hey, hey, in, remember, remember the 80s? Remember? <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember with my CNC Surf Factory, like, Remember Pig Pong? Remember Pig Paul? Yeah. I remember. <laughs> it was an innocent decade. It know. really was. Crossfire. Uh, that so was much cocaine. <laughs> Aside from the cocaine and the hookers. all the cocaine and the, and the corporate corruption. Yeah. <laughs> but but at least we're getting stuff like Stranger Things out of it. Yes. That trailer oh, dropped this. today too. Yeah, that's right. It was so good. I can't wait for that series. Yeah. Everything's coming out on October 27th, though, for some reason. Like a whole a, bunch of stuff coming out for the same day. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Plus, Although we did get a, they did announce a new uh, Iron Fist series. Really? Oh, mm -hmm. the one thing they didn't announce though was who was going to be show running it because apparently uh, the dude who ran the train wreck that was season one has apparently bolted off to help out on the Inhumans. Oh, God. You mean, fuck up? Yeah, pretty much. Cause so, the, I do have to say, as much of a horrible deal season one was of Iron Fist, if they get a different showrunner on there, they can actually salvage the character. Yeah. Or if they have the master of Kung Fu actually be bothered to do Kung Fu. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe maybe it's not like funny because maybe by the time Defenders comes out, he'll actually have some training under his belt, and no. it won't be a white belt. Yeah. No, even in that second Defenders no? trailer, nobody with the uh, martial arts joke. No, you're good. You okay. had it. The, the white belt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the. Uh, yeah, the lowest. Mm -hmm. When you little started. kids start out. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, like, going by that second Defenders trailer, like, dude was flat out still the white belt next to Jessica, Matt, and uh, Luke. Well, Matt would be the black belt. Jessica yeah. just street fights. Yeah. And Luke also 
just street fights. Yeah. Well, he he's invulnerable, so he doesn't really have to. Yeah, do they don't need any you know martial arts. It's like, but Jessica, I will parry your attack and use your momentum to make you Jessica get punched can, in the face. Jessica can still get hurt, but she's strong as shit. So. Yeah, and I don't think she gives enough of a shit to actually learn to fight. It's like most yeah. of the time fist she's, bad guy down. Most yeah. of the time she's drunk off her ass. Though. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so well, maybe she could be taught drunken boxing. Hey, stick. yeah, that'd be maybe, awesome. Yeah. It worked for Rock Lee. That's right. <laughs> That's wait, 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 what? You haven't seen that? No. Uh, right before, uh, I think it's during Sasuke Retrieval. Uh, after he's been wrecked up by Gara, uh, Rock mistakes Guy's sake for his medicine. So he does a full episode or two fight against Kimimaro doing drunken boxing. Probably saw it, but it, it was probably early uh, yeah. Shippuden. So no, it's not Shippuden. It's pre Shippuden. It's yeah, Naruto Part One. Uh huh. During the Sasuke retrieval arc. Yeah, it does. Before really... they went into filler hell. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's I... been a while since I've seen original Naruto. Yeah, I don't think it was mentioned a whole ton in Shippuden. Mainly because they they emphasized more of the gates mm -hmm. and all that nice little jazz. But it's kind of one of those like fun little facts about Rock Lee. He's incredibly adept at drunken boxing, and they made a version of uh, Drunken Lee in the PS2 Naruto Heroes series. It was awesome. Nice. <laughs> kind of interesting if they're going to do that with Metal Lee, too, in uh, Boruto. Yeah. It'd probably help him get over his little phobia. Man. But he's a kid. He's not legally or ethically supposed to drink. Yeah. Neither yeah. was Rock Lee. Yeah, but True he that. mixed up Guy's sake for his medicine, so that's totally forgivable. Yeah. <laughs> Not contrived at all, yeah. but still awesome. <laughs> but speaking of uh, dank animus, uh, me and Adon are going to kind of take center stage for just a second, because uh, um, we both have watched the, like, I now joined Adon in watching the anime 18F. Yeah. Because after, like, everything about last week, I was kind of like, you know what? Let me give this show a try. Let me see what this is all about, you know? And, of course, like, I like I watched it subbed, and I was kind of watching through it, and it's just kind of like, man, this is kind of like some trippy, crazy, I should be doing acid kind of shit yeah, watching this. That's why I skipped it. <laughs> and then the cat appeared, yeah. and then the cat's voice actor started talking. I was like, I know this voice. Mm -hmm. just I scared. recognize this shit from somewhere. And so, that voice actor immediately hooked me. I was, like, paying even more attention than I ever before. And overall, like, I think it's a really interesting concept because every episode is directed by a different director. It's not the same guy, like, because a lot of anime series, you have one or two guys that helm a lot of the episodes, maybe three so that way it kind of stays under a unified vision for the most part with the other directors kind of stepping in to give the main director a break. But with 18F, it's got an interesting deal in that every episode's kind of a different flavor. That so, is really cool. Yeah, that, that is really nice. And it also kind of helps because, you know, the first two episodes that I've watched so far, because episode three dropped, what, today? Yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. So I haven't had a chance to catch episode three, but... It looks like each deal is going to be kind of like, there is a little bit of an overarching bend to it, but each, you know, witch in this case is dealt with in its own self-contained story from beginning mm -hmm. to end. Right. And it also helps flesh out the, char the main character a lot more, and also fleshes out our Neko bros of, as well. Which, you know, like, I was just like, the whole time I'm sitting there thinking, I know this dude, I know this dude. And then I looked him up because I thought at first he was the voice actor of Gintama. And then I realized he's actually somebody who's actually part of the same voice acting group as dude. But he is actually the voice of Dio in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Hmm. And he's done like a bunch of other stuff as well. But that's one of the main things he's known for. But with 18F, like my main deal is, is that like... I'm kind of along with the Don at this point. Like, I highly recommend it. But the same token is one of those series where, you know... You either like it or you hate it. I'm on the hate side. So, 
Yeah, I would say it's 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 good. It's an emperor. It's like it's really not. It's really hard to find an in between. You're mm-hmm. either gonna really really like it, or dismiss it, or you're gonna dismiss it. Mm-hmm. You know, me I mean, I, me I kind of like it because I like the whole concept, and I like how the main character is not necessarily one trick pony, but he's very multifaceted. Yeah, because like in one episode he try he helps this girl wake up, in the other ep- in the episode two spoilers. You know, he helps the other witch kill these bastards, you yeah. know? So, I'm kind of interested to see what episode three brings. I am too, because now now he's a murderer. He actually killed someone. Yeah. But I, I, I bet you they won't even really touch on that. They'll probably have him... Because it's a different this. director. It's well, they'll have him, like, and story-wise, too, they'll have him move into another dream world. It'll mm-hmm. just be, like, a new set of stuff to solve. <clears throat> yeah, well, what is our uh, dashing hero going to do this time? Block puzzles. Yeah. That's a real, real probability. Especially Damn, how, I hope those died in the PSX era. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with like how visually trippy this show is. Uh, new new show just came out today. Uh, the Reflection. It's a Stan Lee produced anime series. Uh, he had the idea, so he gave it to a, a Japanese studio to create it. I'm not digging it, though. What is it about? Uh... I only watched the first five minutes of it, but it's supposed to be like some kind of like superhero show. The it's name. like the the uh, these new uh, superheroes just suddenly start popping up, sort of like uh, my hero academia, sort of. But or did Lex Luthor steal all the exobites from Brainiac? <laughs> That's a very real probability. But yeah, uh, it's just uh, the, it starts out with uh, these these girls in Japan. And they're, one of them's looking at their phones like, oh my god, this is going on right now. Is this even real life? And it's these guys in America fighting in uh, <laughs> Times Square. I see. Well, I mean, like, I remember his last anime series that he kind of did the same thing. He produced it and, like, kind of came up with the initial concept was uh, Hero Man, which was actually pretty well acclaimed. By a lot of people on both sides of the uh, of the ocean. Yeah, but so I don't know. The art style in this sh- show is really bad. It's uh, sort of like a cross between uh, like some three D st- stuff, whatever, and it looks more like concept art than it does uh, or a storyboarding, rather than it does an actual like finished product. Is it better than Berserk's animation? It's worse. Hmm. There's hardly any lighting in the show. Do characters walk up having zombie eyes? Not but emoting at all? Sometimes they don't have faces. It's just blank. Huh. Like I said, it's like a sto- storyboard. Hmm. This is going to probably miss a... Uh, like uh, this is going to require a full watch, sir. Yeah, this is definitely something we're going to have to revisit because it sounds kind of like an April Fool's joke. No, it's... I mean, like I said, I mean I have encountered some anime like like Ninja Slayer is a really infamous example. <laughs> you know, like the beginning, when people were talking; they have no faces. There's nothing there, and they do a close up, and they, there's your face all of a sudden. Maybe it's a deep comment about how before you get to know people. No. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just, I, uh, no. I'm, I'm being <laughs> facetious. Yeah. Yeah, but now, like, my, my curiosity's peaked, so I'll have to check this one out. I mean, if anything, it could be another good wind down anime. Just kind of like Restaurant to Another World. <laughs> or. <laughs> you, you still gotta watch Aho Girl. <laughs> I'll get around to it eventually. It's only 12 minutes per episode. Well, I'll get around to it eventually. <laughs> well, if you're going to watch something short, always watch I Can't Understand What My Husband Is Saying. I actually finished that. I still yeah. got to watch that one. Mainly because I found out that that was the uh, series that the creator of Kobayashi's Dragon Maid did before Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Yeah, they character designs do look very similar, so mm-hmm. I could definitely see that. So yeah, I ended up checking that out like yeah. pretty shortly after season one of Dragon Maid ended. Episode two of Gamers came out this week. Is it, that's getting to be a really good series? What is it? Uh, it's this um, 
I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. Basically, long story. This, like this the, girl created a gaming group for her school, mm-hmm. and she's trying to recruit this one kid that's in a different class as her, uh, who's really into gaming, and he refuses to, to join them. Yeah, because what it comes down to is the gaming group is basically like MLG Pro, you know what, mate, 360 No Scope Bro kind of stuff. And he's more of like, I just he's, play for fun. Yeah, he's a casual gamer. Hmm. Like, his main deal is he likes playing mobile games. So And console games, but yeah. non, non-multiplayer, non more RPG type. So, why would he be a desirable candidate? Because shovelware and RPGs do not, you know, make you a good match for those type of the games that would be played competitively. Yeah. In fact, they would dull your skills in that arena. She secretly has a crush on him. Yep. On <laughs> she does. Yep. She stalks him in the second yeah. episode. There you go. But, uh, Sounds uh, charming. Yeah. And a dawn with like the the, the pierce right through the heart. <laughs> That's why he's, he's the like, delivery man. Yeah. He just <laughs> delivers that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that wonderful that wonderful bit right there. <laughs> Well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I try. But yeah, it's a it's a pretty good series so far. And you know, in our uh, ever so expanding quest of you know, My Hair Academia. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. I was... <laughs> oh, I know that that was going to come up eventually. But <laughs> we're talking more about the along the lines of you know, Otaku dies and goes to a fantasy world deal. Which one? There's two of them out right now. Oh, there's more than two. No, I mean, like, uh, currently on there. <laughs> okay, okay. But okay. you actually <laughs> just finished a uh, series that I've kind of been recommending for a while. Re-Zero. Zero. Yeah. So. Just finished that series uh, a couple days ago. Yeah. Really good show. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I, I, I don't know how to explain it without spoiling it, though. I mean, like, for a lot of folks who haven't checked it out yet, it, it's, it follows the archetype of... Neat gets Neat dragged to a different world. Gets dragged to a different world. Thinks he has, like... But his, they, his power, though, is he can die a lot. And then <laughs> he, he resets himself back to a certain time. He gets checkpoints. Yeah. If he reaches a checkpoint, it changes from then on. So. Are those checkpoints located on the... Edge of Tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> no. No. But, you know, if he gets good enough, all you need is kill. <laughs> and I'm I'm done with those puns. Yeah. So Actually, I would say, like, every time, like, no, what it is is that he, he reaches a bonfire. Uh, he refills his sunny delight. Yeah. That's actually one of the big, like, deals about uh, ReZero is that it's pretty much like the Dark Souls of a talking neat goes to a fantasy world. Yep. But is it soul crushingly depressing? Yes. yes. <laughs> Extremely. Good. Especially towards like episode thirteen or so. Yeah, episode thirteen is like considered one of the most infamous ones. God, That's the one damn, where, that was bad. <laughs> it's the one where it goes from like He goes fucking Well, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say anything. You gotta watch it. It's yeah. that good. Yeah, if you're going to watch a shiny Otaku Me getting dragged into a fantasy world anime, watch uh, watch Re Zero. No, no, no. If you're going to watch a shiny Otaku Neat goes to a different fantasy world, watch in another world with my smartphone. <laughs> uh, or uh, Knights and Magic. Uh, <laughs> the, Whoever thought one. of that title should be fired. And it's like it's I like, agree. It's knights with an apostrophe S. Yes. So it's knights misspelled. and magic. Yeah. So <laughs> I would like to purchase some and for my home yep. and or workspace. It's the where amp- I, ampersand too. Where <laughs> might I purchase an ampersand? Is it like, does he carry it around? Does he hit people with it? Can he get an ampersand plus one? Who the fuck writes this shit? Yeah. Actually, I'm kind of waiting for the series where uh, knights and magic. The otaku, um, you know, dies and wakes up in a fantasy world, except he's an orc named... Douche Gut Ripper. (laughs) Well, what's interesting is that there's something very similar to what you just said, Overlord. Yes, sort of. That is a really good show. Uh, Guys playing, like, an online MMO. Yeah. uh, Playing it all the way up till the servers are being turned off. But... 
and the servers don't get turned off. And then... <laughs> I know! But he can't log out. He's stuck. And he's stuck as... As the his... Uh, avatar. Avatar. Mm-hmm. And all the NPCs start talking as if they're players. What's interesting is that this guy, like, in the game, like, he's he's a huge, huge neat. Yes, he's... Well, wasn't he like a... Uh, well, office was he worker. A salary man? Yeah, 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 he's yeah. a salary he, man. He was a salary man. But so he's a video game otaku, but not quite a neat. Not a neat. Yes. Are yes. you familiar with the uh, neat acronym? No. Not, not in education. Uh, uh, what's the other e? Uh, employment, employment or training. Employment or training. Okay, so he has employment and training. Yes. Mm-hmm. But uh, he still is an otaku, which that's a whole other can of worms that we should probably discuss the misuse of the word otaku. In Japan, it is not a nice thing to say to someone. Right. Nope. It's just like, However, it's been, you know, taken over here. It's like, yeah, I'm an anime fan. That means that I'm a, I'm an otaku. Meaning you never leave your house and just pursue your interests? That's me. Not something to be proud of. <laughs> <laughs> so, in, in this game, Overlord, he, um, he dies because he can't go back to reality. So he's... Mm, he's not dead. He's not dead. But you, is he we, undead? We He's could, his his avatar was a uh, lich king. Oh, he's a giant skeleton. Yeah, I saw. He goes from yeah. But he he can't. Die. I mean, he hasn't died yet. He's so he's so fucking overpowered. Nobody can touch him. Well, there's that harem that forms around him that tries to touch him. Oh yes, there's always a harem. Of course, but why else? They're what all, else would you do with your Gary Stu? They're, Surround him with beautiful women. They're all the NPCs that he like wound up reprogramming yeah, before it, the server shut down. It, 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 it gets it gets a, a little just very slightly more complicated than, than she an is, average. The, the main harem. the main chick is yeah. like a, a so yandere with him though. Yeah. She will murder a bitch <laughs> just and, for looking at the dude. And so, <laughs> if anything, it's very amusing and very entertaining. Yes, it's not. Season deep. two should be coming out. Uh, I'm waiting for that winter. Season. Yeah, I believe. Well, the way you sell it makes it sound kind of interesting because if you approach things a certain way. But when I watched an episode of A Rum Shoulder, I was like, "Huh, heard the premise, saw a bit of an episode. Nope." <laughs> <laughs> um what what i liked about it is that um he he switches from so in his head he's human but yep. when when he's talking he's the other he's in he's in character and so it, it, and so it's very interesting because anytime he any, well anytime he he tries to go out of character something happens and like it forces him to go back into character yes yeah and apparently he's feeling stuff like he can feel things now and he's feeling like an undead so they're trying to m- make it um like what would it be like to be undead and so like um there's a couple of scenes where he as a human he would be someone who would feel compassion but because he's an undead he doesn't feel anything and he's aware that he's not feeling anything so I should be it's, feeling something right it, now. It's very interesting. <laughs> it, it, it gets very interesting. And like I said, for if anything, it's very entertaining. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Especially towards the end when he has to... Well, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> There's lots of memes about when it. When he has to spoiler the spoiler in spoiler. Yeah. yeah. There's lots of memes about that final spoiler. Part, part of it, though. What I have a feeling that I've probably seen all the memes. I just don't know it's from that show. Yeah. Most likely. Yeah. Hold the door. All the buffs he puts on. Yeah. Before. <laughs> but does he put on underwear? Before before we fight, buff, 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 buff. Yeah, like, <laughs> what he needs probably is Goku pants. <laughs> he's he's very he actually has a red suit, so there you go. <laughs> well, classically the main character wears red. Mm-hmm. Very true. Which I probably need to add some red to Bob and Ray. <laughs> well, no, like, like what you also need to do is like when you get somebody to illustrate the stuff finally, 
You just need to make sure that they use two primary colors throughout, orange and blue. <laughs> <laughs> but only in their pants. No, no, no. Also their top. <laughs> Goku pants, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know how that old adage is about, like, movie posters? Like, how, like, a lot of times the most popular movie posters, the one you're always, like, gravitate towards with your eyes, Has are the ones blue. that have, like, an orange and blue kind of tone to them. Yep. So, Everything Ray's going from... to a tanning booth, and <laughs> Bob drowned. Got it. Everything wow. from the early 2000s till now, pretty much. Had that big like swash of <laughs> orange and then like a blue background. It's kind of uh, like movie trailers nowadays. Always have to have that. Boom. Yeah. The boas. The, bo- <laughs> the Inception boas. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> and now they Run! get ice cream. Boom. <laughs> I'm still waiting for somebody to cut a Love Live trailer with the boas. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see it. It fades to black yeah. every time. It's like, it's no hallucination. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> they found a friendship that would last them the rest of the... Boom. <laughs> <laughs> that should be our title. Boom. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, man. Now I have a strange temptation to want to go see Dunkirk when it comes <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that ninety percent moi? Yeah, yeah, it really is. It is. No, no, it's this like, one, this one, the trailer was all like because they were counting the seconds until the moi. Yep. Yeah, because like as as it keeps going, the moi's get more and more intense. Yep. And then it cuts off all of a sudden, like when it reveals like the title and everything. Speaking of that, just um, as a very small question for all of you, uh, as a person who's visually impaired and depends on audio dialogues between people, and this movie not having mostly uh, dialogue, do you think uh, that is something that can add to to a, a movie? Does that work where you only show when you focus on you know, what's being shown to you, the images and, you know, the pretty explosions or whatever. Well, that's a rough line to cross. Like, a really good example is, I don't know if you ever got a chance to catch this with Wally. e um, A I good chunk of the of Wally e had, like, almost no dialogue in it. Was it was purely, a robot that could only say his name. Yeah, it was purely a visual kind of experience, mm-hmm. and that can be kind of rough for, for you. Moana is another example too. Which one? Uh, the Disney movie of the the girl. What, no, which one? Did you just say Moana? It? Moana. Moana. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that was a pretty good movie. But, but yeah, it also relied on a lot more visual stuff than necessarily dialogue. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it is uh, something that they do most of the time. They use the lack of something to pronounce something else, mm-hmm. like the lack of you know dialogue makes the visuals. That yeah. because they are what you have to go on. Mm-hmm. Well, the so lack of music would be great. Right. In some of these movies too, because I. But then they them. wouldn't have boas. Yeah. I'm talking about like Moana. Boa. No Moana. <laughs> Moana. <laughs> I'm done. So that that one so- stupid ass song like it's so shiny. God, I hate that fucking song <laughs> that and them remixing 80s songs that i didn't like when i first heard them sweet dreams sweet yeah. dreams are made of cheese yeah, yeah, yeah. Marilyn manson did a better version than yeah. the eurythmics did yeah. but i was actually talking about the sound of silence for the ghost oh, in the shell trailer God. you know what i didn't need another version of that song I hate about, that don't you song. enjoy the silence enjoy the silence I enjoy the embrace silence. the silence no, it's he Enjoy said the, the sound- Silence, originally by Depeche Mode, then covered by Failure. Yeah, that. you said uh, the, sound of, the silence. sound of Silence. Which also is another I hate that really annoying... Song. But as you were saying, I'm on, we're Remake. going off on tangents. Uh, yes, we are. It's what we do. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It's good. Um, so d- does that work for you? Does uh, it- Since it is kind of minimalistic... It does kind of work, but only when used sparingly. If, like, I couldn't 
sit through a silent film. Okay. Hell, I can't even sit through black and white films. I will fall asleep ten times out of ten. Of course, I will f also fall asleep during Lord of the Rings Two Towers, so that's not really a very <laughs> good uh, barometer. I can no longer watch uh, Star Wars Episode Four. I've seen it so many times, I fall asleep. No, uh, yeah, I think like it really depends on the director. Like the director in this case is Christopher Nolan, who is kind of known with his visual imagery. Mm -hmm. uh, not only, of course, through his Batman trilogy that he did, Interstellar, but stuff mm -hmm. like Interstellar, Insomnia. Memento. Wasn't he for he did he uh, responsible for Memento? Yeah, that yeah. that was the film that's like started it. Uh, that catapulted him and got him the Batman job. In it's the all place. visual stuff with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he tends to be very like heavy on his visuals. Um, with Dunkirk, it's taking more of a realistic visual turn. Mm -hmm. So I could see that. Like, the, if anything, it's going to be more about the brutalities of, of war, I especially see. during that time period. Yeah. I, can, I can already see somebody with, like. No spoilers. You know this is history, right? Mm -hmm. This has really happened. Yeah. Again, you <laughs> respond with my classic line of, hey, uh, in the passion, Christ dies. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm like, and plus it's just like, don't tell me if Tom Hardy dies. He's, he's my crush. Mm -hmm. I want to tell him that I'm like a tiger in bed. <laughs> and he wants to tell his security detail to get this person away from me. Yeah, he probably would. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, I mean, seriously, if someone just comes up to you at random and goes, I'm like a tiger in bed, how would you react? <laughs> you would actually, you would react very horribly, normally. Exactly. Because just kind of... that's just not something you go up to people. It's like, not, hi, how are you doing? I'm a fan of your work. It's, no, I want to be on you. Yeah. <laughs> how does anyone think that will end well? Of course, you know what would end well? This podcast? 